Greetings everyone and welcome to the Inside EV's range test of the Mazda MX-30. Today I'm going to try to perform a highway range test done at a constant 70 miles per hour. I'm a few kilometers away from the highway, but I don't think that uh, me just traveling from here to there will make a huge difference to the overall range result. I charged the car up to 100%, which was nowhere near as fuss free as I thought it was going to be. Mazda says you can charge this car at uh, up to 50 kilowatts, but I never managed to get it over 30, 32 kilowatts. So instead of taking um, just over half hour, which is what Mazda says uh, this car requires for a full charge, I ended up spending like two, two and a half hours at the charger and it eventually said 100% and uh, it had finished charging. So with 100% in the battery, this car is now telling me I can do 176 kilometers before the battery runs out. So even though it's like two or three degrees Celsius outside, I'm going to attempt to do this range test uh, without any heating. And that also includes the heated seats. Because if I enable the HVAC, um, the range drops by over 20 kilometers, even if I enable it on its uh, lowest setting. So I might catch a cold, but I will max this car out, I promise. So the MX-30 is Mazda's first real attempt at making a, a mass market electric vehicle. There are a few key things to note about the MX-30. Mazda has made it clear that it didn't give the MX-30 a big battery on purpose. Mazda says its capacity is um, 35.5 kilowatt hours, but its usable capacity is uh, actually 30 kilowatt hours. The manufacturer says that in town, according to the WLTP test cycle, you can drive this car for up to 260 kilometers. However, since it's now winter and it's freezing outside, this car won't even crack 200 kilometers. So why has Mazda given this car such a small battery? Which seems puny by modern standards. There are small city cars that offer more battery capacity and more range than this. So what's the point? Well, Mazda says it took into account the fact that the average European's uh, daily commute is just around 40 kilometers, which means this car has plenty of range to satisfy that daily commute need. Another reason for the small battery, Mazda says, has to do with the handling. The automaker says that the MX-30 is a fun car to drive, even though it's a crossover. And I have to, to give them that. The MX-30 is surprisingly fun to drive, especially given the fact that um, with 145 horsepower, it won't blow you away with acceleration. It also looks really, really cool. Even though I'm not a crossover person myself, I don't really appreciate crossover that much. However, this MX-30 is really appealing looking to me. It looks like a two-door, but it actually has two secret uh, freestyle opening doors, or as they used to call them, suicide opening doors. Basically, they are um, rear hinged. It also has a very sexy fastback roof line. And when you open up both the front and the rear doors, there's no B pillar. In all honesty, before picking this car up from Mazda, I was expecting to, um, find lots of faults with it and to have to defend it so that uh, I don't give it a horrible review and Mazda will never give me a car to test again. But I don't have to. You expect the low range because it has a small battery. But if you can live with it and you don't mind it and you can charge it at home and use it as a second car because it is not ideal for road trips even though that's what I'm doing today. It's actually quite a lovable car. 
Okay, so we've driven for 21 kilometers and we have 86% left in the battery with an indicated 150 kilometers of maximum possible range. However, I think I'm going to have to turn on the heater because I am freezing. It's around 2 degrees Celsius outside and I'm starting to feel it inside the car too. I did warm the car up while it was still charging but that heat has since uh, dissipated and um, I'm starting to get cold. Okay, I'm going to enable it. I can't do it anymore. So let's see. It's showing 150 kilometers. 149 now. And if I enable the heater, 129. So 20 kilometers just vanished. But I will be much more comfortable. Bring on the heat setting it to 23 degrees Celsius for now. So yeah, I think we can leave it here for now. We're going to pick this up again when I'm at 50% battery. Okay, so I'm down to 50% charge left in the battery. We've covered 69.3 kilometers and the range meter says we can do another 79. And I have kept the the heating on. It's a pity this car doesn't have a bigger battery because it's actually a surprisingly pleasant long distance companion. The seating position is quite low and sporty. You can really pull the steering wheel close to you. The seats are um, they're not excessively supportive but they don't uh, create any pressure points and besides they have uh, an electric lumbar adjustment. Visibility is a mixed bag. You have a good view out and you do sit a bit higher than in normal cars, although you don't sit quite as high as in some uh, small SUVs and crossovers. But when it comes to um, rear visibility and over the shoulder visibility, particularly over the shoulder visibility, uh, this car is pretty crap. And since Mazda is selling this car as a uh, town runabout, it would have made sense for it to have better visibility. The manufacturer went for more style instead. Has it paid off? Well, take a look at the exterior and make up your own mind. I think it looks quite good. But is it worth the sacrifice in practicality and uh, usability? We're down to 43%. We can still do 68 kilometers and we have traveled 78.5 kilometers so far. Our average electricity consumption so far is 21.4 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers, which is quite a bit off uh, what Mazda claims, but then again, the claims were not made for uh, constantly driving at 70 miles per hour or almost constantly driving at 70 miles per hour. And since I'm making this video for a US audience, it's worth pointing out that Mazda does intend to eventually sell the, the MX-30 stateside. However, rumor has it that it's holding off starting sales there because uh, it wants to introduce the range extender version. And while a range extender version of any car might not be the most exciting thing to talk about, in the case of this Mazda, it is because it also means the Japanese manufacturer is bringing out the Wankel rotary engine, which it last used on the RX-8 sports car, which interestingly had the same door setup as the the MX-30. We are now able to uh, average 70 miles per hour. I've been able to maintain the speed for around 80% of the journey. Towards the end of the journey, I might um, switch off the heating just to eke out as much range as possible. We've just passed the 100 kilometers mark and we have 25% left in the battery and a predicted 33 kilometers until dead and just like my uh, BMW 530e electric range test night is upon us it's now quarter past six and the sun has long since set we're down to 20% in the battery we've covered 105.5 kilometers 
and the predicted range is 29 kilometers. I'm probably going to reach the city and have to come back on the highway for a shorter stint, obviously. Although I wouldn't want to be stranded on the highway. We'll have to see just how, how close I can cut it. If I have 1% left in the battery as I'm approaching the charger, or if it stops telling me how many kilometers I still have left, or if it tells me I have 0% just as I'm approaching the charger, that for me will be a mission completed. So yeah, we'll pick this up when we're about to run out. We're now down to 2% in the battery and uh, two kilometers predicted range. We've traveled 127.4 and I'm not even sure I'm going to make it back to the charger, which is like six or seven kilometers away. I am now going to come off the highway. I am going to turn off uh, the heating. And that has made no impact on the range. It still says I can do one kilometer. I'm not even going to use the same charger that I uh, initially used. And I'm just going to plug into um, a, an AC charger. Um, that's in a supermarket parking lot. The first one was also in a supermarket parking lot, but um, it was a DC fast charger that can charge at up to 50 kilowatts. The battery light in the dashboard has started flashing. It was just solid before, but now it started flashing and it looks like this. There it is. We just passed 130 kilometers. Please, car, don't, don't let me die here on, the, on this highway with no hard shoulder. I'm going to uh, not be driving at 70 miles per hour anymore. I'm going to be driving at around 50. It is now showing me the turtle symbol. It says acceleration limited. Okay, we're two kilometers away from the charger. Boy, this is tense. Will we make it? Yeah, so the dashboard right now looks like this. Okay, so one kilometer until our exit. The car is still maintaining 50. We can use a little bit of regen, which by the way is accessed uh, via these two paddles behind the steering wheel. So you pull the left one twice to have max regen you can almost one pedal drive it in this mode, but not quite. Or if you pull the right pedal twice, you are completely freewheeling when you take your foot off the, the go pedal. Are they both charging? So there's a leaf and a Tycon here. But I think none of them are plugged in. I'll have to check it out. So yeah, we have covered almost 135 kilometers, which isn't much. It's quite a bit off what uh, Mazda says you can do, but it is super cold outside. So yeah, maybe in summer you can get closer to the claimed range. And we are charging. Victory.
sadly this isn't a fast charger so i'm going to uh, probably be spending some time here are you charging are you not charging you are but it's completely dead i hope you enjoyed this video and if you did please like it and subscribe to the channel for more content like this thank you for watching and take care